Hi guys, it's Henry Herbert here from Hobbs House Bakery and I'm going to make for you my New York style sourdough bagels. Now I was very lucky to go to New York for my birthday and I ate so many bagels out there. So I've been practicing the recipe and I want to show you how easy it is to make it at home. It's really simple. Anyway, so I've got my bowl and we've got 500 grams of strong white flour. So we're just going to go straight into the bowl. And then we're going to add our sourdough. So this is our 60 year old sourdough culture. Sorry, 61 years. Sorry, sorry, sourdough. And we're going to add 150 grams straight into it. Now, the sourdough here is really more about the flavor rather than actually rising it because we're also going to be adding some fresh yeast. So this yeast here, this is live and living, and it's what we use at the bakery at Hobbs House. But at home, dried yeast would be absolutely fine. But what you've got to remember, if a recipe says uh, 10 grams of fresh yeast, use 5 grams of dried yeast because it's concentrated. Well, we're going to go in with 15 grams of fresh yeast. Now we need to season our flour, so we've got a big pinch of sea salt, so about 10 grams. This is Cornish sea salt, lovely. Try not to use the table stuff. And when you're putting it in, don't put it on top of the yeast, because that's going to kill it. So to enrich it, we're going to add some oil. I've got some nice local rapeseed oil, and we're going to go 30 ml, or kind of two tablespoons. And then for a bit of sweetness, about 20 grams of local honey. And now we've got one egg here, and we're just going to separate in the egg white and we're going to save the egg yolk for glazing our beautiful bagels later. And then final thing, 200 ml of tepid water. And that basically means blood temperature. You want it warm because that gets the yeast going and it just gets the whole thing moving. You'll have your bagels ready for lunch. Right, now normally you can knead by hand, but actually I've got a KitchenAid, so why not use it? If you're going to use it by hand, you need to get mixing in there and you need to knead it for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's really elastic. We're going to go straight into the mixer. And now we're just going to start at low speed, Get it mixing, and then we're going to whack it up to full. Right, so that's had about 10 minutes. Let's have a look. That looks pretty good and stretchy. Trusty dough scraper. Just want to scrape the dough down. So you can see that. It's looking lovely and stretchy. The gluten's developed. And of course, if you do this by hand, we've got videos to link to, so check them out. But what that needs now is to have its first rise or its bulk ferment, and that's where it's going to prove up, and it's going to develop a beautiful flavor. And you've just got to let it do that for about... 30 to 45 minutes at room temperature. So back in the bowl, save on the washing up, cover it with a bit of cling film, and we'll just leave that for 30 to 40 minutes until it's risen. Time for a coffee. Right, so the dough has had about 35 to 40 minutes proven, and you can see it's really full of air. A little sprinkling of flour just to make it easier to, to work with, because it's quite a loose dough, but it's gonna make lovely bagels. So this is gonna make eight nice sized bagels. Now, we could weigh it, but actually, it's better just to use your eye, I find. So we're just going to split this in half, and then in half again, and half again, and we should end up with eight even-sized pieces. Lovely. So just a little scattering of flour. Now what we need to do is we need to get these nice and round. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. Probably the easiest way that I find to do it in your hands is to kind of use your thumb to kind of tuck it under. So we're just going to kind of circulate it around using our thumb to kind of tuck it underneath until we end up with a nice little knot at the bottom and a smooth dough on top. There you go, nice and easy. Even easier way, though slightly slower, is to kind of pat it out with your, your palmy hand and then just kind of fold the middle in. It does the same kind of trick if you find it too difficult. So we just kind of tuck it in until you've got a relatively smooth Lovely looking bowl. Or you can do it on the surface of the table using your hands, and this is the kind of the fastest way to do it. You don't want to do it onto a floured surface because it will slide around and we need a little bit of it to stick. So basically, we're going to kind of circle our hands around like a cage and using our thumb to tuck in and essentially, by magic and your fingers, you end up with a nice ball. And I guess if you're trying to be really pro, is you do two at the same time, kind of oscillating. You know, practice makes perfect. Whatever method works for you, just give it a go. Right, so we've now got our eight rolls. They're looking nice. They don't look like much like bagels. So what we're going to do is just a little scattering of flour. Is we're now going to kind of poke our fingers through to make a kind of a hole, like a donut. And then you just want to just loosen it out. I find this is the easiest way of doing it. And just want to make it so it's kind of like ring shape and relatively even. We want, you know, we want a good size hole. You want it to feel like a bagel. Like that. Just put it onto a floured surface just so it doesn't stick. And then we're just going to leave that to rest. 
and then do the same with the other seven. Right, so these just need about, I don't know, kind of 10 minutes or so. Just keep them covered so they don't crust over. And we want them just to prove up just a little bit while we wait for our water to boil. Easy. Right, so my water's boiling. These have had about 10 minutes. We're now gonna poach them in the water for about two minutes. So this is the fun bit, so let's just get rid of that. You're gonna be quite careful here because not only are these kind of proving up and are quite delicate, but also you don't wanna get burnt. So just lower them into the water, get a couple in at a time. And essentially, this might seem completely mental, like why are we boiling bread? But it's what gives the bagel that kind of classic chewy crumb without the crust. They do go in the oven afterwards, so don't panic. So we just want to poach these for about, yeah, like two to two minutes or so. You can see them slightly kind of puff up in the pan. I probably shouldn't have put three in, but hey, hey we've started now. You just want to be smothered with cream cheese and avocado and smoked salmon. Just singing to my bagels. So once they've had a minute on one side, you can just flip them over. Not really necessary, but it kind of feels quite nice to flip a bagel. So these have had two minutes. I've got two trays ready. They've got some greaseproof paper on. Let's just slip these little guys out. Look at that. They look great, don't they? Straight on, nice and careful. Beautiful. God, these are walking. Look at them. So easy. All right. And repeat. And now we need to glaze them. So we've got our, we've got our egg yolk that was reserved from our egg white from earlier. And that's just going to give it a beautiful shine. We could just put these straight into the oven, but they're going to be kind of like dull. Whereas actually, you know, it's like a car. You know, you can make a beautiful car, but if you don't give it a good paint job, no one's going to admire it. So let's just brush that on. Nice and liberty. And now we've just got some poppy seeds. Um, you could use sesame seeds, black onion seeds, whatever you fancy, but I quite like poppy seeds. I like the contrast of colour. And just give them a little, a little sprinklage. So these puppies need to go into an oven about 200 degrees for about 15 minutes or so until they're nice and golden brown and baked all the way through. See you in a minute. Look at those puppies. They look absolutely beautiful. They smell amazing. They're golden. I'm just going to stick them on a stick because that seems like the right thing to do with a bagel. And if you want to see a recipe that's more than just your usual smoked salmon and cream cheese, then check out the video that will be coming up soon. But until now, that's our New York style sourdough bagel.